Okay, what I'll do is I'll hand you over now to Wendy McGowan, who's our finance director. Wendy, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, right, well, after all that excitement, I'd hate to bring you back down to earth with the, uh, the boring bit of the finances, I'm afraid. <laughs> Sorry, Karen. Okay, so if we can just look back for a moment to 2011, um, the financial performance of the business was excellent. You may remember that this was the year where Burley Horse Trials changed ownership. And it's for this reason that the turnover appears to be significantly lower. However, this is due to how we report the income. Instead of showing both the income and expenditure numbers in full, it's now just the share of B's net profit, which is reported as income. Removing the impact of Burley, income is in fact 5.2% higher than 2010. And as a result of the continued efficiencies throughout the business, operating expenditure only rose by 2.2%. The net result was an increase in operating profit by 11%, with the exceptional item for the sale of Burley included, total surplus before the tax was significant <coughs> excuse me, at 728,000. Having reached the financial objective of 2 million for reserves, the board took a decision to establish a development fund within members funds. This money will be utilised in future years for developing the sport or for improving the members' benefits. 2012, however, has been a tougher year, as has already been touched on. The rain and a number of abandoned events has had an impact on the financial performance, with increased costs for officials, as well as offering support where we could uh, for um, issues being faced by events. Burley and Blenheim both had hugely successful events with record crowds. Our agreement with Burley Estate means that from this year, we receive slightly less of the profit from the horse trials which is, used, uh, which is why the income is slightly down. We're still forecasting a surplus of 250000 before tax, and the balance after tax will be transferred to that development fund. <coughs> Although events are run by independent organising committees, B still provide officials, stationery, ground care equipment to support events and to ensure that all our affiliated competition is at the highest possible standard. In return for those services, organisers do pay a small amount of your entry fee to us to cover some of those costs, known as the affiliation or event fee. As you can see, from, from, um, though the affiliation fees do not cover all of the costs, and so the contribution from BE and central funds in helping events deliver competitions has increased hugely by 59%. It's a direct impact to you all as it helps to keep the entry fees down. Unfortunately, though, this year won't only be remembered for the huge success of the Olympic Games, but also as one of the wettest years in history. As you will all be so acutely aware, our sport was so adversely affected by the weather, no part of the country or month of the year escaped without being impacted by abandoned events, although the eastern region was least affected. In recent years, the value of abandonment insurance has been questioned by some, but when you consider this year a total of 56 events partially or fully abandoned and a huge 1.7 million was refunded to members for entry fees, I'm sure all will now agree that the insurance is of huge benefit to the sport. You can see from the historic data shown here that although insurers have received higher premiums than what they paid out in refunds in 2009, 10 and 11, the impact of the refund this year means that the sport and members have actually benefited more than insurers have over the last five years. Many organisers have incurred a great deal more expense in doing everything possible to keep events running, and so had the insurance not been in place, the loss of income to the sport would have had a hugely negative effect on events and organisers, with the possibility that some may not have been able to continue in the future. Amazingly, KBIS, our brokers, were able to secure abandonment insurance again for us for next year with only a small increase on premiums. To keep that increase to an absolute minimum for competitors, we are subsidising some of the premiums from the abandonment fund held centrally. Memberships and horse registrations were very stable during the year. We've seen a very small increase in the number of members, up by 2% year on year with no change in the number of horses with season tickets. 
So how are we spending your subscriptions and season ticket income? As an organisation, we've managed to keep membership subscriptions as low as possible. Renewing your full membership costs costs you the same now as it did in 2009. Providing the sport is the biggest area of expense, as you would expect, and together with delivering the best possible service through our membership team, these costs account for almost 50% of your fees. Unfortunately, we will never be able to avoid head office costs, although we do keep them as low as possible, and corporate governance ensures we're acting appropriately. The marketing team worked hard to secure sponsorship and in communicating with members through the website and social media. The influence of IT is always increasing, and there is a plan to review how technology in the sport may enhance the membership experience on event, which both Mike and Amanda have already touched on. So how do those ratios of spend compared to last year? The amount spent on the sport has increased, and the team have been successful in further improving efficiencies to reduce some of the spend in membership services. But I'm sure you'll agree that that has not compromised our service. We've had to incur increased costs in other areas of the business, unfortunately, but we continue to review spends throughout the organisation to ensure we're getting best value for money.